Hi folks, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Holly. I'm a book cover designer based here in New Zealand and I do these videos as well about book cover design. This is actually part of a series and it's all about self-publishing. So if you're interested in this topic, there is a whole playlist you can go and explore after this one. Today's topic covers five things to keep in mind when either designing a cover yourself or evaluating concepts that a cover designer has given to you. All of this also applies to pre-made covers if you're considering that, but there are a few extra things to think about when looking at, at pre-made covers so I will do a separate video talking about some of those things in the future. Thing number one is appropriateness by which I mean is it appropriate to a your genre and b your brand. Now as you may have noticed if you're a fantasy reader there are certain tropes and themes that always seem to be on these covers and that's what tells us that they are fantasy covers. Likewise, crime thrillers often have a particular aesthetic. They might have a running figure in the middle, a dark silhouette and bright typography. In self-help, you have lots of white used often and quite plain covers, lots of typography, um, less imagery, and the same goes for business books. Now all of these exist for particular reasons. There's a, a particular aesthetic that is built around each of these genres and that is to create recognition. So you know that if you read one of these books and then you go to a bookshop looking for something similar, it looks similar, therefore you make that connection in your head and you're more likely to buy that book. This is something that you need to tap into as an independent author. I know it's really tempting to just go off on a limb and do something completely different, but if you want to sell copies of your book, either physical copies or ebooks, this is a really important thing to consider. And if you're working with a professional cover designer, they will know this. The rest of the points I'm going to cover in this video all relate back to this point. So when you're considering each of these things, think about are they appropriate to the, the brand that you've created and to your wider genre. Thing number two is typography. Now this may be stating the obvious, but typography is the common denominator amongst all books. In order for a book to sell and communicate what it is, who it's by, and all of that, it needs to have typography on it. In fact, with some covers, they just simply have typography on. There's no other imagery. You know, there might be a couple of different colors, but the typography is the main focus. Now, I'm sure somebody is gonna find some exception to this rule, but if you're a self-published author and you want to fit in and communicate and actually sell your book, you need to have your author name and title on the cover. That is absolutely essential. So within typography, there are many, many different styles and it, it's a, it's a bit of a minefield out there, especially if you're not familiar with design. What book covers designers do, they don't just sort of slap some typography on there and hope for the best. There's a lot of changing things around, adjusting the leading, which is the space between the lines, and maybe even the kerning, which is the space between letters. In some cases, book designers, like myself, will use hand lettering and custom typography to make it even more specific to that book cover. As a general rule, you want to make sure that your cover is very clear and easy to read. It needs to be easy to read when it's this size as an Amazon thumbnail or a thumbnail anywhere else online. The typography also needs to be appropriate to the genre, so you wouldn't want to use a beautiful for calligraphy script on say a business book but that might be just perfect for a historical fiction. There are certain typographic tropes that exist within each genre so if you are designing this yourself make sure to do some research ahead of time, look at different books in your genre and the type of type that they use. Your cover designer will do this as well and you can be a part of the process if you've done some research as well. Number three is imagery and and in the same sense that typography needs to be appropriate to the genre and your brand, the imagery also needs to be 
appropriate. You have a few options when it comes to imagery as well. You could use photography, which could be a stock photo or it could be something that has been made custom or taken specifically for your book cover. Likewise, you could use illustration which is what I do, and lots of book cover designers do this. Or you could simply let the typography speak for itself and not have any particular imagery apart from the type. Which one of these you decide to go with will depend on the genre of your book and maybe the style. If your book is quite realistic and about real people, you might want to consider photography, but it will very much depend on the tone of your book and illustration might be just right. Say you've written a, a YA romance, illustration might work perfectly for that. So it really does exist on a case by case basis. But again, it's worth doing your research here and seeing what the common things are within your genre. If other books that are comparable to yours use illustration, then I would recommend going in that direction. Or if it tends to be just typographic, using just typography. Number four is color. And colors, as I'm sure you know, can convey a variety of different emotions and tones. There might be colors that are particularly associated with your genre or mean particular things within your genre. So that's something that's worth exploring to begin with. For instance, take books with red on the cover. Red can mean a number of different things. It can mean passion, it can mean blood, it can mean violence, it can mean love. There are lots of different connotations within that. And depending on the imagery you're using, the typography and the words that are used on the cover, these will mean different things. So if you're looking at a crime thriller that uses a lot of red, you're probably going to assume that this is quite a, a dark, perhaps bloody story with lots of violence happening in it. But if you look at something like this cover here, which is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, this has a lot of red on it. And the red here does represent blood and um, and violence as well, because it's set during the Trojan War. But it also represents love and passion, which is a big part of this story. So if you had a story that was similar to this and had similar themes, you might want to consider using red on the cover. I could spend a whole video going through the meanings of different colors and the, the connotations they have within different genres, uh, but that would take me quite a long time. And this is just a sort of quick fire video. So let me know down in the comments if that's something you would like to see. Finally, tip number five is contrast. Now, as I said before, it's really important that your cover is easily readable when it's this size. And contrast is something that can help you do this. Contrast is simply the difference between light and dark. Within the context of cover design, that might mean having a light colored title on a dark colored background or vice versa. If you're not sure if the contrast is high enough, try reducing the book cover down to a, a smaller size or look at it from a distance across a room. Can you still clearly read the title? There are other things that can be used to accentuate contrast, such as color, or you could use things like a gold foil or other colored foil on the title, which will help to bring it out more. But remember that even if you're using foil as a technique, it still needs to work as a flat image, as a thumbnail online. Contrast is probably most important to consider if you've got a photograph. And this is a mistake that I see a lot in uh, self-published cover designs, especially if the author has done it themselves, is that there isn't enough contrast between the, the photograph and the title. And that might be because the photograph has lots of different tones within it and that's layered underneath the title. One way of getting around this would be to knock back the contrast in that particular area of the image or choose a different image. Ideally, you want some sort of white space, which is empty space within an image where you can put the typography. That's what works best for book covers. So when you're choosing your photograph or illustration, keep that in mind that you want to be able to have 
plenty of contrast between the background and the title. All right, that's it from me today. If you have any questions on any of these topics or you'd like to know more about them because I can definitely go into a lot more depth on all of these, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. As I said at the beginning, there's a whole playlist on this stuff. So if you're interested in that, I will link it in the cards up above and down below in the description. And if you're interested in looking at my work, I will leave links to that down below as well. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.